Hello people. So I've been doing a lot of tests on the relative insulation properties of walls versus synthetics and other fabrics. Uh, but I'll do a slightly different test today. So, you know, pure insulative value isn't everything. Uh, performance on wet is one thing. And one aspect of that is drying times. So that's what I'm testing today. How do the drying times for this merino base layer stack up against this synthetic base layer? Of course, if you find these tests useful or interesting, please do click like or subscribe. That will just encourage me to make more or do more interesting tests. Um, and of course, there's also some blog links in the description where I tend to write up any of these tests I do with a little bit more information. So do check that out as well, and you might find some other interesting stuff on there as well. Kit for this test includes some scales, bucket of water and of course a timer. Now to be precise on the base layers I'm using uh, these bottoms are these merino ones or some Howie's 100% might just be able to see that 100% merino wool long johns basically. Um, I've actually chosen to use long johns because my other base layers are in the wash and these ones are some decathlon standard polyester synthetic long johns as well, or leggings if you prefer to call them that. So which one is going to rule the roost in terms of drying time? I have to admit the much more expensive merino um, leggings are my, my personal preference when I'm out and about in the field, but when I'm thinking about drying times, what's actually going to come out top? So the method I'm using to determine drying speed is, is weight. Um, obviously things may feel, it's very hard to judge exactly when something's dry, so by weighing them before, during and at the end of the test I should be able to get a good feel for how much moisture they maintain and have the speed at which they've lost it. So to weigh in the dry garments, starting with the synthetics, those weigh in at 161 grams. And the woolen garment, make sure that's zeroed. Those weigh in at 167 grams. Now to give those a good soaking and start the drying process. Now I'm going to wring each garment gently. Merino is a bit more delicate than synthetic, so I don't want to wring the life out of it. But I'm going to wring each garment out for around 30 seconds gently and then do my first saturated way. Let's go for the first weigh in. So the merino garment weighs in at 412 grams and trying now the synthetic that's weighing in at 453 so for the same amount of ringing Actually, the synthetic garment, the polyester garment, is holding a little bit more moisture than the merino, which is actually somewhat of a surprise. Okay, so I've very deliberately hung these in the same way outside. It's a light breeze, as I say, overcast, so the colour shouldn't make too much difference. And let's come back in 10 minutes and at intervals thereafter to weigh in and see who the winner is. I'm not going to make this painful by filming every weigh-in, so we'll zip through this bit and see you in a few moments with the results. So, results are in. Six hours after starting the test, both layers are within 5% of their start weight and basically felt dry to the touch. Um, but who got there first? Well, the answer is the synthetic, but only just by half an hour and we can see that closeness in the chart here and that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, incidentally I did move to sort of slightly longer readings than 10 minute intervals after a while because I did realise that was possibly a bit overkill over the time it was going to take to dry the garments. Looking at these results there's a few things I found interesting. First is that the readings were so similar. Given a selling point of synthetic insulation versus wool is its drying time, I honestly expected a bigger gap here. Even though beaten narrowly that's pretty reassuring for the wool. 
Secondly, that synthetic gained a lot more weight initially, as we saw, was a surprise. Frankly, I didn't expect that, as synthetic fibres themselves don't absorb water easily, whereas wool, wool does absorb some. However, I have a theory on this. I've noticed another test that wool is almost buoyant and needs more effort to get to fully saturate. I suspect the fib fibre structure, which is not smooth like synthetics, and the fluffiness, holds micro air bubbles quite effectively. But if I fall into a river, it feels like wearing wool base loads would be a bit of a buoyancy advantage. Next up, both fabrics dropped weight quite quickly at the beginning. This was the dripping effect. Quite quickly, any loose water flowed with gravity to the lowest point and then dripped off. Once this mass of water was gone, the rest largely required evaporation, which is a slow process. And actually, we saw this evaporation start early and speed up as the day warmed up, basically. If you're in a situation where you need to dry a garment quickly, so you did fall into a river though, that dripping effect could be quite helpful, i.e. something like swinging the garment to speed up the flow of loose water to the extremities where it can drip off. But in the end, we did see this point that the synthetic did, did get to within 5% of its start weight. That little bit quicker than, than the, the wool, but not massively quicker, which as I say is of reassurance if you're choosing to use the wool garment. So how would this ultimately affect my base layer choice in different circumstances? So in warmer weather, on um, shorter trips, I would probably opt to choose the synthetic. So something like an overnight or a couple of day canoeing trip, or a hike in sort of typical British warm but damp conditions, I'd stick with the synthetic. For longer trips or those in colder conditions, I'd go with the wool and be pretty confident that actually if it does get wet, it's going to dry quite quickly and effectively, even if not quite as good as the synthetic. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting. I certainly did and was pretty reassured by that wool performance. If you found it interesting, do please remember to like, like or subscribe or both, and I'll hope to see you again soon.